Hi everyone. This lesson follows on from the lesson I gave on where we locate land uses to now look at how different land uses fall into disagreement with each other. And um, we use the word conflict for that. How different land uses come into conflict with each other. And I'm going to focus on a case study in the Lake District for this. We also need to understand what the solutions to avoiding some of these conflicts are. So let's get started. Where is the Lake District? Well, it's in northwest England. It is a national park. And there's many land uses that happen within this protected area of land that come into conflict with each other. It's useful for you to know the name of the national park and it's useful for you to know at least one settlement place name within the national park. For example, Kendall, just like Kendall Mint Cake. Um, or perhaps you could meant you could choose Ambleside, which is a very famous tourist hotspot in the Lake District. Okay, uh, as usual, guys, you want to take the notes as you go through these presentations. So pause the video to make sure that you can you've got time to copy all of this out. So let's focus on tourism first. How does tourism cause conflicts? Well, as you can see in the photo, tourism causes small villages such as Ambleside or Kendall to get very, very uh, jam packed with cars. And that can make the movement of farm vehicles in the area really difficult. So the farmers don't like the tourists sometimes because they clog the roads with cars. Um, This picture is from the Cairngorms, but it would also apply to the Lake District. Sometimes walkers leave gates open, and when the gates open, it can cause animals to escape. This means the farmer wastes time looking for them, but it can also cause accidents to happen. Um, and you can see in this picture that it's very easy to imagine how an accident could happen if you're coming up the other side of that hill at speed. Um, it's really important that for you to link the idea that not only are walkers leaving the gates open and the animals escaping, but you're linking it to how it impacts on the farmer and it causes the farmer to waste time or it can cause um, accidents to happen is another way. But you've got to demonstrate why it's a problem. You can't just say that it happens because actually if you stop the sentence that walkers leave gates open and animals escape, you've not actually pointed out why that's a problem. Stone walls uh, can be damaged by people reclaiming over them. Um, instead of using the gates or the little steps that are built over walls, which are known as styles. Again, you need to point out why this is a problem. It's a problem because it uses up the farmer's time to repair. And it's actually really, it's a lot of hard work to repair stone walls. Um, and also, if you have broken walls, it means livestock can escape. And of course, that means they can get hit by cars. And that's going to kill. That's going to kill the sheep or whatever has escaped. And that's going to cost the farmer money. If you've got a dog, you must always keep it on the leash when you're out in the countryside because dogs' instinct is, of course, to chase some animals. And um, as you can see here, one farmer has left a pretty powerful message um, that they don't want people uh, letting their dogs off the leash because. Um, Actually, dogs can kill sheep. Um, and if a dog isn't able to kill a sheep, if maybe you've got a small dog, they can panic the sheep. And that can cause the sheep to harm themselves. Um, it can cause the sheep to miscarry lambs. And that has, a, that has a financial impact on the farmer because they make their money through the livestock. So this is a really important point. Um, Sometimes farmers will restrict access to certain areas and that can annoy the walk, that can annoy tourists because tourists want to be able to walk over the hillsides and enjoy the landscape. But farmers will restrict access to some areas, especially, for example, when it's lambing season, because uh, we don't want to disturb the sheep when they are lambing. Noisy tourists can disturb the sheep during the breeding season, causing them to, as I mentioned before, with dogs off the leash, causing them to miscarry. 
that that's obviously sad. But from the farmer's perspective, it's not only sad, it's also a financial impact because that lamb you see in the picture there represents profit for the farmer. They, they would raise that lamb and either go on to produce meat with it or wool with it or milk with it. And um, that's a future profit lost to that farmer and his family. Just as I mentioned uh, tourists clogging up the centre of towns like Ambleside in the Lake District, farm vehicles can slow the tourist traffic down to a crawl on major roads and it can be really frustrating. It's actually a, a cause of serious accidents where people who aren't, um, they, they aren't regular users of country roads, so they don't know the road, they don't know where the twists and the turns are, they get impatient and they try and overtake the slow moving tractor and because they don't know the road that can lead to head on collision with somebody coming the other way. That happens more than you might uh, believe possible and um, this is a serious conflict that we're identifying. Remember though, you can't just say farm vehicles slow up tourist traffic. You've got to point out why it's bad. So for example you could say as you can see on the screen this adds extra time to a journey or it can cause accidents as people try to overtake on roads they aren't familiar with but you must add that extra layer of detail. Okay so on to our next land use, quarrying. Um, quarrying is when you dig natural resources out of the ground and this is a quarry in the Lake District, uh, sorry in the, um, this is in the Yorkshire Dales actually this picture but the Lake District does have quarries and they quarry slate there. Quarries spoil the natural beauty of the landscape. They're ugly, they're big scars on the landscape and you can see this landscape isn't very green and lush. It's um, It's been scarred by that industrial land use. As well as the visual and noise pollution created by quarrying, they produce a lot of dust and in this picture this is um, this is a Lake District slate quarry and it does create a, a high degree of dust which is unpleasant for nearby residents and visitors. So uh, it can also um, be spread even further by the lorries leaving the quarries. Just again I'm going to reinforce this point continuously. You cannot score a mark if you just say quarries create visual noise pollution and lots of dust. You must point out that it is a problem because it is unpleasant for nearby residents and visitors. You have to include that why is it a problem level of detail. Uh, the heavy equipment used in quarrying um, can endanger local wildlife and local farm wildlife as well. So it's not just uh, wild animals we're worried about here. We could be worried about farmers' livestock that have strayed onto roads. But also they can put off visitors returning to the area because nobody wants to spend their holiday alongside big industrial trucks. The trucks caused air pollution and that spoils the atmosphere for tourists. There's a good example of what I'm talking about. You get no mark for just saying a truck causes air pollution. You need to point out why it impacts upon other land uses in the area. It spoils the atmosphere for tourists. So there's the tick. And in this image, you can see, I mean, quarrying is, is <laughs> it's, it's a pretty uh, heavy duty industry and um, setting off explosions like this to access the uh, minerals that you're trying to get out of the earth. Well, they destroy the peace and quiet of these beautiful locations for tourists and visitors. And that in turn threatens local tourist related jobs. Um, so there's people, it's not just the tourists that are bothered by quarrying. It can be the local tourist industry that wants quarrying to be limited or controlled. This aerial view of a uh, slate quarry shows you um, the damage done to the environment by quarrying and you can see, you can easily understand that wildlife habitats are going to be disturbed by the removal of rock from the landscape. Um, it's a huge amount of da damage done to the land and it's almost 
um, irreversible. Um, sometimes quarries are turned into lakes uh, when they're finished with, but that clearly is a, a change to what the landscape originally looked like. And uh, the, the damage to uh, the natural ecosystem is massive. So onto another land use that has conflict, wind turbines. The Lake District is a national park, but also it's an SSSI. That stands for Site of Special Scientific Interest. And the wind turbines can disturb the local nature and wildlife. You might not realise that that can happen, but the turbines are quite noisy and they create quite a lot of vibration, which can affect local animals and their nesting and uh, nesting habits. Um, The turbines are ugly and that they are built within an area that is a national park is clearly a conflict because some people believe them to be ugly. I have to point out that some people think they're really quite nice um, additions to the landscape. And obviously where we build them on top of hilltops, they're going to have an impact on destroying the view. Just to stop you um, getting into a rhythm of just writing down the notes or, or just watching this video without really paying attention, um, it's important for you to realise that you're scoring marks every time you can point out why a named land use in the Lake District National Park uh, causes a conflict with another land user. So it's not just for knowing that the land use is built there, it's for knowing how it causes a problem that you're scoring the marks. Um, some wind turbines are fenced off. Uh, the good example is Kirkby Moor. That's a nice named example. You'll always improve your answer if you can include named examples. And that makes it difficult for visitors and walkers to access the areas of land that they want to access. As you can see in this picture, um, Turbines can really dominate a landscape and they can put people off returning to an area. Um, some people believe that the wind tur turbines spoil the natu natural beauty of an area. And you can see why from that photo. Okay, so here's what a typical question would look like. For a named area you've studied, the Lake District, explain in detail ways in which two different land uses may be in conflict with each other. I just want to take a second here to talk about this question because in my experience, it's frequently done wrong. Think about how you would answer this question first of all. Pause the video and think about how you would answer it. Okay, I'm assuming that you paused the video because when you answer this question, there's a difficulty. For a named area you've studied, explain in detail ways in which two different land uses may be in conflict. Well, what happens commonly is that people get confused when they look at the diagram and they try and explain how glaciated areas are in conflict with coastal areas. Which when I say it out loud like that, is as ridiculous as it sounds. But believe me, that is a common mistake. Alternatively, some people try and explain why um, water storage and supply is in conflict with a river valley area and recreation and tourism is in conflict with a limestone area. Well, that's not what you've been asked to do either for a named area you have studied. Another problem is that people don't read the question fully and they see that it, they don't notice that it says ways in which two different land uses may be in conflict with each other. So they only talk about industry, meaning that even if they talk about industry for 10 good marks, they can only score two out of four. So make sure that you understand what you're being asked to do. For a named area you've studied, that's the Lake District National Park, and it is a glaciated upland area, by the way. That's just for reference. 
but for a named area you studied, the Lake District National Park, explain in detail the ways in which two different land uses may be in conflict. Um, and make sure that you choose two of them. And um, notice uh, that it actually asks for you to point out why the two landscape, what two land uses are in uh, conflict with each other. So why is uh, farming in conflict with tourism, and why is tourism in conflict with farming? Uh, is what you're being asked to do here. So there's quite a bit of difficulty in this question. The last thing I should point out is that it depends who your teacher is as well. I teach the Lake District as a case study. Your teacher may give you a different case study, but that should make no difference to the relevance of all of these notes. All right. So now that we've looked at what a uh, conflict is and to explain why conflicts exist, uh, now we need to look at how we manage them. And that means what solutions can we put in place to stop conflicts being so damaging? Well, again, the Lake District is the national park that we would focus on. And it is, um, it, because it's a national park, it's protected by law. And that means that you cannot just go um, chopping down bits of forest without permission. It means you can't just have a quarry without, first of all, gaining permission or having a wind turbine without, first of all, getting permission. And it does mean that sometimes these projects cannot go ahead. It also means that tourists um, have rules to follow when they are in the national park. You can't just go on uh, Coniston water whenever you want in your boat. You cannot access certain areas for uh, sports fishing or for grouse shooting whenever you want. So the national park has rules which are protected by law to help protect the park area. Next solution is a more focused one. Frequently, walkers over a landscape will damage the, uh, the land. Uh, they actually wear away the footpaths. And an easy solution to remember is adding gravel, slab rock or wood chips, or as you can see in the photos, wooden boards called duck boards, create paths and that reduces the, the wearing away effect of people's footpath erosion on the landscape. I mentioned a minute ago uh, shooting and fishing. Well, uh, shooting is obviously dangerous and noisy, and it also means that you have to close off an area of land. But uh, in order to, to, to limit the impact of this uh, sport, which is a very lucrative sport, it makes a great deal of money for the areas that it takes place in, we zone it. That's the solution. Zoning an activity means closing off a small area of land for the activity to take place in, and that limits or reduces the impact of the noise and the damage to the land that takes place. It also means that people are warned off accessing those areas during the shoot. Putting up traffic warnings about animals straying into the roads helps non-locals, especially non-locals, to be aware of this danger. Of course, it helps warn local people as well. But uh, people who aren't typically from the Lake District area will not know to look out for uh, sheep or other livestock straying into the road. And it is a real danger, especially when you're driving at night um, or in the darker seasons of the year. Um, you, can, um, you can be easily involved in a serious accident. So signs such as um, those that warn to keep dogs on a leash are an essential strategy to uh, prevent the loss of farm livestock. Um, it is best if those signs are in multiple languages, of course, to uh, allow for the fact that not all tourists speak English. Here's a good example of reducing the impact of livestock escaping, people breaking walls by climbing over them, or leaving gates open to allow animals to escape, and that is the self-closing gate. It's on a spring, and so when you open it, it shuts itself behind you and it has a bolting mechanism. Building styles, which is basically a set of steps, over a wall will help to reduce the damage done by walkers, because as you can see in this picture, this wall has not been broken and damaged by people climbing over it, which means the animals behind that wall will remain contained, and therefore they won't escape, get onto the roads, get hit by a car, and reduce uh, the profit for that farmer by the loss of that livestock. 
Now, there is a long list of solutions that we could talk about. You can see clearly I have focused on farming and tourism uh, for this presentation. And um, in this question, you would be asked for a named area you studied, choose one landscape type, you would choose the Lake District, which is a glaciated upland, and uh, you would explain in way, detail the ways in which conflicts can be managed. So if I just return to this picture here, it's important that you can describe the conflict so um, to help reduce damage to walls by done by walkers. There's the description of the problem. We can build styles to help people climb over them. There's the solution. You have to have both the solution and the problem a little bit in the sentence. So it's again about developing full detailed sentences. If you're not doing it, you're not hitting the standard that the National 5 exam expects and you won't get the marks. Okay, the next lesson is on uh, changes in farming in developed countries. And um, make sure that you've gone back through this presentation, that you've taken all of the notes and that you understand that uh, the difference between the conflicts and the solutions to the conflicts and spend some time looking at those past paper questions. I'll see you next time.